What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Mr. Domrox, and today it's another video. And well, I got a, I got a chance to get hold of XSplit Gamecaster, which comes as a total package when you purchase an XSplit um, license. And so I've been using Gamecaster and playing with it because, well, uh, if you don't want to run overlays and have any extra features, you can just use XSplit Gamecaster, and this will do everything you need it to do, everything from uh, automatically getting hold of your Twitch stream. You don't have to put any codes in, you just log into your Twitch and it'll give it you. Um, you can select your server, you will do a lot of automated things like set up your settings here. So uh, 720p HD, that's the automatic setting it picked up. If I wanna record my gameplay with it, I can and you can go through all of the modes and in the full version you have on watermarked um, 720p, 1080p and original resolution. Same with the stream, you can have 720p, I think it's uh, 540p, 720p and 1080p are on watermarked if you have a full license. If it isn't um, a full license, you're running the free version, you end up with watermarking on your stream. You can also use a webcam here. Um, I've got my turn off at the moment and it has the ability to do chroma key and most people already know how to do that. It's very simple, if you run a green screen or a red screen or a blue screen or whatever, you can use uh, the chroma key within Gamecaster to stream and have a green screen and obviously just have you, your head, shoulders, face, etc. And I cover that in a different video with uh, when I go over open broadcaster software. But today I want to talk about the Gamecaster software. Now there are a few things some additional things that come with the Gamecaster software. You have a be right back mode, which you can customize. Mine's running standard at the moment because I haven't really played with it. I'm just on a fresh install. Um, my previous video on OBS was a run on Windows 8. I've had some issues. I've gone back to Windows 7. Um, the, the comparisons between the two, we can go on and on about how much better Windows 7 is compared to Windows 8, but it is personal preference. I did enjoy Windows 8. Windows 8.1 was great, a lot of the additional features, things that they're, they're listening to from obviously their their audience, they want to make it a better piece of software, but I digress, we won't go on about that today. So you gotta be right back mode, so if you alt tab out of your game, it'll put up a, a menu, put up a screen here and uh, it'll go be right back and you can have a custom thing here. So if you wanna alt tab in your game, window it, say as you're choosing a server in DayZ or whatever game you're playing where you don't want people to see what server you're joining, especially in Daisy and Armor, etc., because of stream sniping and whatnot. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can also turn your game FPS on. You can see that in the top left corner and your CPU load on your system. One thing that I did find using Gamecaster, and it's the same kind of situation you're in if you use open broadcaster software, is if you are not running QuickSync on your system, you're going to struggle to stream. Now a lot of people, a lot of the professional streamers will use a separate streaming PC so they have their main gaming rig with an i5, an i7, whatever they want and a graphics card of their choosing. I'm running a 780, a GTX 780, which is fantastic. Does all the game work, plays every game I want it to play, whether the game's got bugs or not, Battlefield, um, as and when I want to play it, um, etc, etc. So I'm not going to talk about system specs, but I'm going to reference some things. And this is to do with the Gamecaster software. Because what I found in my testing when I was on Windows 8 and running Windows 7 is that, quite frankly, I am unable to stream um, Battlefield 4 uh, predominantly. Now, whilst this will affect other games as well, especially Armor and DayZ, which are very CPU intensive over graphically GPU intensive, um, you will f encounter problems. And I know a lot of people have been talking about QuickSync. Now, I don't actually have QuickSync on my system. I'm running a fancy Xeon processor, which essentially means I don't have an iGPU to do any of my H.264 encoding, which is unfortunate, but it was a personal choice down to price. Um, and I know the price of on these I set the i7 4770K has come down quite a bit down to within I wish I'd bought one now or I'd waited a month or two and bought one but I'm stuck with the Xeon I'm not going to be able to make any return on that financially and because I do this for fun and every penny I earn goes into my you know food drink electricity you know etc etc it's not something I'm willing to outlay again um, and then sell my Xeon at a loss so I'm kind of stuck but one great thing if you're running an Nvidia graphics card that supports shadow play. 
is you can actually get hold of and use the NVENC, I think it's called, um, codec, or it's not codec, but use that reserved shadow play um, portion of your GPU processing to render your stream. Now, I did a test stream the other day, and earlier today even, and I found that I could stream Battlefield 4 at uh, 70, 80 FPS. Um, that's during big intensive things, big explosions, tank warfare, running around, whatever it might be, whatever map. I did it for a little while, not very long, for about one round, just to test it. If it wasn't going to work in one round, it probably wouldn't work at all. And I just want to show people how to enable this and show them the two options. If you can use your iGPU and use QuickSync and you've already got it turned on, you can use XSplit Gamecaster for this purpose. So we're going to click on that right now and I'll show you. So here we are. And here it is, and uh, it's reverting back to X2, X264 uses your CPU. Now I'm using an automatic resolution, so in this case it is 720p, so if I use that, it'll use whatever was set here. So if I click close, this will automatically pick your resolution for streaming, whatever it's capable of doing. So 720p HD, and you have QuickSync here. If you have an iGPU, you can also use the VCE, which uses your iGPU or DGPU if you're running an AMD processor. And if you have a uh, NVIDIA graphics card, you can use NVENC. So there we go. It's not available on your system. Read more. Apparently the NVENC isn't available on my system, which is strange. It should be, but it says it's not available at the moment. Now this actually could very well be because if I go to here, and here we are, open GeForce Experience, I have Shadow Play turned on at the moment. So here is an issue. Here's an issue that I've just found, and I'm going to do this live on this video. So let's let's just minimize these off the way. I love that background. So if I launch Shadow Play right now and I turn it off, so I'm not able to use Shadow Play's Shadow Play recording whatsoever while I'm gaming, which makes sense because this is what's going to be doing all the work. So I shut this down. Now I'm assuming, and I don't want to make an ass out of you and me, that now I should be able to enable. See, I can't. I can not. I can't actually use it. But what I will do, and this is uh, this is just for obviously this video. I'm going to shut down. Yes, you are loading. It'll probably ask me to rate it. Don't show this again. I don't want to add a rating. And I'm going to relaunch. XSplit Gamecaster. As with anything, if you install something, say a font, and you need to relaunch your application for it to see it, you know, things work out that way sometimes. So we're going to relaunch this now. Thank you. You're running. You're ready to use. We'll go to settings. We'll go to here. And I hope this has fixed the problem. I'm, no, it doesn't. Apparently, NVIDIA NVNC is not available in uh, is not available in your system. Read more about compatible hardware with NVIDIA NVENC. <sighs> Such a pain in my backside this is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick restart, and then we will see if I can get this to work. So I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I fixed my problem. And uh, what it turned out to be after the restart, and I checked the drivers, and essentially the latest beta drivers from NVIDIA, uh, Gamecaster doesn't support them, so it doesn't see that NVNC is available, so I wasn't able to enable it uh, within Gamecaster. So by rolling back the drivers to the last uh, signed drivers, not the beta drivers, um, WHQL or whatever it is, I was able to enable NVIDIA NVNC. And Essentially, this will solve all of your problems. So if you're not running um, a CPU that has iGPU, and so you can't use QuickSync, or you're using one that just doesn't support QuickSync whatsoever, if you're running, um, yeah, uh, any CPU that doesn't support QuickSync, or uh, an AMD, G, uh, AMD CPU, um, so iGPU, uh, DGPU, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so VCE. If you can't use that, and you have an NVIDIA graphics card that it supports, uh, Shadow Play, or NVENC, as it's called here. You can use that, and you're pretty much good to go. I streamed for about an hour, or a round, or whatever it was, Battlefield 4, and I had no FPS loss. 
I had a pretty fluid game, and I know people will say, oh, Battlefield 4 is broken and it's buggy, but to be quite honest, it was pretty smooth for me. Um, I have all the same problems that everyone else has at times, game crashing, blah, blah, blah. But that's just because the game was released and it's not finished, and it's, you know, that's just the way it is. I really do quite enjoy Battlefield 4. I enjoy playing with friends, so I can keep coming back to it, and I want to be able to stream it, and stream it at high quality. So now I can stream 720p, HD, no overlays, unfortunately, because that's what Gamecaster doesn't do. It's just designed to stream your webcam and do straight up webcam, game, done. Nothing special. Now, as soon as the XSplit uh, streaming software, the full streaming software that works like OBS with overlays, etc., etc., supports NVNC or QuickSync, I think I saw that it doesn't support NVNC, which is a shame, but as soon as it does, I will be using that more often and hopefully have some epic nice shiny overlays I'm working on some new things and we can have a synaptic gaming experience and um, that is it pretty much ladies and gentlemen so thanks for watching um, I hope I didn't babble on too much as ever if you got a question ask it in the comments section you can get my Twitter it's in the description so it's at Mr. Don Rocks or twitter.com forward slash Mr. Don Rocks um, yeah leave a comment Subscribe if you're new to the channel, please. And uh, hit the like button. Or hit the dislike button. I don't really care. Just show that you're watching this video and you actually want to have some input. If you've got something to say, say it. And um, I'll try and reply as and when I can. But yeah, thanks for watching.